Let's talk about what I wish I knew before I did my master's degree at MIT. Hi, I'm Liz. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. I am excited to give you the inside scoop because I get asked all the time, what was it actually like to go to MIT? What did you wish you knew before you started your program, before you left home? I completely quit my job to do my master's at MIT. In 2019, I studied supply chain management. It was a one year master's program within the School of Engineering. Also did long distance with my husband. Decided it was the best idea for him to stay back in Atlanta since it was only a one year program instead of changing his job. I didn't know what job I would be doing after the program since I had completely left my job. Here's some of the questions I'll be answering in this video. Are the classes at MIT hard? Was it expensive? Any secrets about campus? Is it worth quitting your job for grad school or doing long distance with your partner? And any advice you wish you had known before going to school? I'm excited to tell you all the things. So I did a lot of research and I would encourage you to do your research too before you commit to quitting your job, moving across the country going back to school and spending a ton of money investing in yourself and your future because you're leaving behind your salary that you could be making for the current year and paying for the program costs. I went on a full scholarship to MIT, so luckily tuition was not a concern for me. It did have other costs. Living in Boston is expensive. I knew this going into it, but I don't think I realized it until I was actually in the program. Everything in Boston is so expensive. Going out to eat, transportation, calling an Uber is so expensive. And then you also have to get all this winter gear just to survive. Coming from Atlanta, I didn't really have a big snow coat, snow shoes, mittens, scarves, things like that. So a pro tip, a lot of my classmates went to and got a bunch of coats at a discounted price, which is a good idea, especially if you're going through a one year program. I definitely did not anticipate the cost of living in Boston, which is something to consider, but it was a really fun city to live in. It was so fun. There were so many things to do. I got to do a historic house tour in South End. I went to so many concerts. It was a really, really fun place to be in for just a year. Leads me to my second point is the weather I was not prepared for. And something really interesting about MIT that I didn't know going into it is they have these underground tunnels that connect certain buildings through the school. So if it's horrible outside, it's raining, it's snowing, you can go and find your route through these buildings without ever having to go outside. So pro tip, if you go to MIT, make sure you look up the tunnel system before winter and figure out all of your routes because you don't need to be outside if you don't want to be. A big part of living in Boston because it's so expensive is finding somewhere to live. So I did choose to live on campus in the dorms and there are what you would expect they would be from dorms. Not the most luxurious, but also not the worst. The dorm I stayed in had a gym and they would have this monthly brunch for the whole apartment to come together and it was really fun but i really liked staying in the dorms because so many of my classmates did very small amount of my class decided to live off campus probably because our program was only one year long we were all really close together so we could meet up in the study rooms do our homework together study for tests together go out together so i personally really liked living in the dorms and that was a big question for me of where to live in boston how to do it the most affordably. I think maybe I could have found something a little bit more affordable, but it would have taken a lot more research and also a lot of luck to find somewhere to live. And being in a city that I wasn't familiar in with a lot of deadlines, a lot of classes and the job search to find a job within the same year that I started the program, I just really wanted to keep it easy and keep it simple. What I get asked is how are the classes at MIT? What's the workload like? And some people have blatantly asked me, is it hard to go to MIT? Are the classes hard? Yes. I knew it was going to be hard going in. I knew it was going to be hard because it's MIT, of course. And I love that saying that anything worth easy isn't worth having, but it's definitely doable. If you're accepted, you have to put the work into the classes and you have to balance your workload. I think the hardest part for me is that there are so many things to do. There are literal VPs, founders. The founder of Netflix came and gave a talk while I was on campus. The founder of Trader Joe's came. So you're balancing all these competing priorities of things you want to do, classes you want to do. I really didn't anticipate doing was getting my sailing license. 
there is a sailing pavilion at MIT and they let anyone come and do this training workshop so that you can take out a sailboat whenever you want to. And even as an alumni, I can go back and take out a sailboat. It is a quick learning day, one quick day, where you learn everything about how to sail. And it was so hard and honestly got a little bit scary there. Me and my friend almost capsized a few times, but such a fun experience and such a random thing I feel like you wouldn't know about MIT. Not as well known fact about going to MIT is that they really let you take classes that you want to take. So I got to take classes in the Sloan Business School even though I was in the School of Engineering. I got to take an entrepreneurship lab. In those classes there were people from all over campus. I met undergrads from MIT. I met computer science PhD students. I got to meet people from all over and I love that so much about the campuses because they're so focused about innovation they really open their doors for anyone to take any classes that they're interested in in boston because it's so expensive is finding somewhere to live so i did choose to live on campus in the dorms here are what you would expect they would be from dorms not the most luxurious but also not the worst the dorm i stayed in had a gym and they would have this monthly brunch for the whole apartment to come together and it was really fun but I really liked staying in the dorms because so many of my classmates did. Very small amount of my class decided to live off campus, probably because our program was only one year long. We were all really close together, so we could meet up in the study rooms, do our homework together, study for tests together, go out together. So I personally really liked living in the dorms, and that was a big question for me of where to live in Boston, how to do it the most affordably. I think maybe I could have found something a little bit more affordable, but it would have taken a lot more research and also a lot of luck to find somewhere to live. And being in a city that I wasn't familiar in with a lot of deadlines, a lot of classes, and the job search to find a job within the same year that I started the program, I just really wanted to keep it easy and keep it simple from where I lived. I also get asked a lot about what was it like to do long distance with my husband and was that the right decision? It was really, really hard. I'm not going to lie to you. We got married in 2018, September of 2018. And then the following August, like not a full year past our wedding, but almost I left for grad school. And he came up and visited a lot and I went back to Atlanta and visited a lot as well, but it takes a toll on you to fly, leave where you're living, miss out on things going on with your classmates and be preparing for job interviews while you're on the plane going back to Atlanta. So it definitely takes a toll on you. Looking back at it, we would definitely not make another decision because I didn't end up living in Boston after the program. So he would have had to leave his job, which he had just started at the time and find another job for just one year and then we'd relocate again and also moving our dog up to Boston just wasn't the smartest because he's an old dog for a temporary situation. So yes, it's hard to do long distance with your significant other, but you can definitely make it work. You have to put the effort in to plan out your flights, get those deals, do the flight tracking. And it's kind of just another layer beyond grad school of trying to figure out what you're gonna do after school and where you're going to live and how you're gonna keep your relationship going. Speaking of what to do after grad school, another question I get asked a lot is, would you really leave, quit your job to go back to graduate school? If you're thinking about graduate school, you have to think about what's the right time in your career for you, what you wanna do after school and what can your program help you achieve and is it worth leaving your job for that time period? For me, it definitely was. I got a huge pay increase after graduate school. I actually did return to my company, but I had a really great opportunity that I wouldn't have been able to land had I not gone to school and gotten that extra experience. So if you're thinking about making that decision, you should definitely check out my graduate school application checklist and it'll help you walk through the ROI of when should you go and create a workbook of which schools you're interested in and also look into scholarships and how to start that process of getting more information. Drop any questions you have about grad school or MIT in general in the comments. Can't wait to hear about your grad school journey next. Thanks for watching.